All right, so today we're taking a deep dive into Britannia Industries. The kings and queens of the Indian biscuit aisle. Yeah, you know them, everybody knows Britannia. We've got all sorts of data here. Financials. Market analyses, shareholder info, all that good stuff. 100 year history. Yeah, and they're pulling in annual revenues exceeding 9,000 crore. So that's a lot of biscuits. That's a lot of biscuits. So let's just jump right in and unpack some of these financials first. Sure. Screener f flagged a couple things. Uh, first off, their ROE, their return on equity over the past three years is really impressive, 57.8%. Wow. Now, I know that a high ROE is generally seen as a good thing, but yes. what's the story behind that number? Well, a high ROE can mean a few different things. Um, it could indicate that they're really efficient with managing their assets, okay. squeezing you know every rupee of profit out of their investments. Yeah. It could also mean that they're using debt strategically to fuel growth. Oh. Um, but to really know what's going on, we need to compare this ROE to their industry peers. So are they outperforming or is this just sort of a rising tide that's lifting all boats? Interesting. So context is key when we're talking ROE. Absolutely. Now, Screener also highlighted Britannia's high dividend payout ratio. It's sitting at 82.2%. Okay. Which means they're sharing a big chunk of their profits with shareholders. Right. Which on the surface sounds great. But are there any potential downsides to that that we need to kind of be aware of? Yeah, a high payout ratio can be a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. um, while it might attract investors who are looking for income, right? it also raises questions about their reinvestment strategy. Oh. You know, are they returning so much capital because they don't see any good growth opportunities? Or are they just confident enough in their current operations that they can reward shareholders while still investing strategically? So that makes me think about their future plans. Yeah. You know, are they content with where they are? Are they looking to expand maybe new product lines or? Yeah, international markets. Exactly. All of that, you know, the dividend payout ratio is just one piece of the puzzle. You got to consider it with everything else, their overall growth strategy. Got it. Now, another interesting piece of the Britannia story is that they are part of the Wadia group. Right. It's not just some standalone company. It's part right. of this huge conglomerate with, uh, you know. Fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah, fingers in a lot of pies. Yeah. Airlines, textiles, yeah. real estate, you name it. Yeah. So what does that connection mean for Britannia? Is it a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Is it both? Well, being part of the Wadia group definitely has some advantages. Okay. Like access to resources, sure. you know, financial backing, established networks. Mm -hmm. It's like having a really powerful family behind you. Right. But it does add some complexity. Okay. The group's overall performance and the strategic decisions they make can trickle down to Britannia. Mm -hmm. And investors are always going to be watching those related party transactions. Yeah. Make sure there are no conflicts of interest. That's a really good point. So it's not like a clear yes or no. It's this kind of web that we have to untangle. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this high-performing company, a big dividend payout, this tie to the Wadia Group. Right. But no company's perfect screener flagged a couple of potential cons that we should probably talk about. Sure. The first one, the stock is trading at a pretty high price relative to its book value. Okay. Can you maybe break that down for somebody who isn't fluent in finance? Sure. So think of book value. Like, the company's net worth, what would be left over if they sold all their assets and paid off all their debts? Got it. So if the stock price is way higher than that book value, it could signal a few things. Okay. Maybe the market is really optimistic about their future earnings. Okay. Or it could suggest that the stock is overvalued. Right. And investors are maybe getting a little caught up in the hype. So how do we tell the difference between, you know, real optimism and... Irrational exuberance. Yeah. That's where we got to look a little deeper, look at their growth prospects. Okay. Their competitive positioning. Right. Do their future earnings justify that premium price? So it's about understanding the why behind the numbers. Exactly. Okay. The second concern that Screener flagged was Britannia's sales growth. It's been relatively low over the past five years. Right. Now, my first thought is to panic. But I'm guessing it's not that straightforward. No, you're right. You always have to look at the bigger picture. Okay. The packaged food industry in India is really competitive. Yeah. New companies popping up all the time. Consumer preferences are always changing. And right. All these established companies are fighting for market share. So a slower growth rate doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing something wrong. <laughs> it could just be that the whole market is tough right now. Exactly. We need to benchmark them against the competition. Okay. And look at their strategies. Are they innovating? Right. Are they expanding into new markets? Yeah. Are they finding ways to stand out in a really crowded space? 
That's a great point. Context is everything. It's not enough to just look at the numbers. You got to understand the bigger picture. Yeah, the forces at play, all of that. The dynamic. Now, I think there's one more piece of the puzzle that we should look at before we wrap up this part of the deep dive. Okay. And that's the ownership, you know, who owns a slice of this biscuit empire. The shareholding pattern. Yeah. Yeah. It can tell you a lot about the power dynamics within a company. Exactly. We've got this breakdown of shareholder types. And the thing that jumps out immediately is that the promoters hold a controlling stake. More than 50%? Yeah, over 50%. Now, yeah. for those who aren't familiar with that term, who are the promoters and what does their ownership mean for the company? Sure. So the promoters are usually the founders okay. or early investors, the people who have a lot of influence over the company's direction. Okay. In Britannia's case, that strong promoter holding often translates to stability okay. and a long-term vision. Yeah. They're not just in it for the quick buck. Right. They're in fact. They want the company to succeed for the long haul. That makes sense. Yeah. But then we've got these other categories of shareholders, you know, the foreign portfolio investors, the domestic institutional investors, mm -hmm. the public. It's a whole ecosystem. Yeah. And I noticed that the percentage held by foreign portfolio investors has been going up and down, fluctuating. Yeah, it fluctuates. Why would that be? Well, those fluctuations can be driven by all sorts of things. Yeah. Changes in global investment trends, perceptions of the Indian economy, geopolitical events. You know, wow. it's a barometer of global sentiment. So it's not necessarily a reflection of anything Britannia is doing. It could just be... Reaction to the global market. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's something to keep an eye on. It is. All right. Let's take a breather and recap what we've learned so far. Okay. We've got Britannia, a legacy brand with a strong financial track record, a really nice dividend payout, a connection to the powerful Wadia group, and a couple potential areas of concern. That we're going to date into. Yeah, it's a fascinating mix of positives and negatives that we need to kind of weigh carefully. Exactly. And it's important to remember, we're just scratching the surface here. There's so much more to explore, especially when it comes to understanding their strategies for the future of the Indian food industry. I can't wait to dive deeper. We'll be back in just a moment to continue our deep dive into the world of Britannia Industries. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You know, before we get too far into Britannia's future, yeah. I think it's worth circling back to those foreign portfolio investor fluctuations we were talking about. Right. It's easy to see those numbers going up and down and think, oh, is something wrong? Yeah, it definitely makes you wonder, you know, what kind of broader trends might explain those shifts. Well, global investors are always, you know, reassessing their portfolios. Right. Interest rates in one country can impact decisions all over the world. Okay. Currency fluctuations, political events, it's all connected. So those FPI shifts might not even be about Britannia specifically, just a reaction to... The global investment climate, yeah. Okay, that makes sense. It's like trying to read the tides. Yeah. You have to understand the currents and the wind. Right, right. To see which way things are going. Now, I want to go back to those potential cons we were talking about. Yeah. The high price to book ratio and the slower sales growth. Okay. We talk about how book value is basically a company's net worth on paper. Right. But what does that really tell us about their future potential? Well. Could a high price to book ratio actually be a good sign? You're thinking like an investor now. Okay. Remember, book value is based on historical data. Right. It's the past, not the future. Mm -hmm. It doesn't take into account a company's intangible assets, things like brand recognition, okay. customer loyalty, a strong management team. Right. Those don't show up on a balance sheet, but they can be super valuable. So in Britannia's case, those iconic brands and their market position, that could explain the high price to book ratio. Absolutely. Investors are willing to pay a premium because they see potential beyond just the numbers. Right. A high price to book ratio means that the market believes the company is worth more than what their accounting value is. Oh, yeah. They're betting on future earnings. That makes sense. Now, let's talk about the slower sales growth. Okay. You mentioned how competitive the Indian packaged food industry is. Yeah, it's a crowded space. How can we tell if Britannia's performance is a sign that they're struggling or it's just a reflection of the overall industry? Well, we got to look at their performance compared to their competitors. Okay. Are they losing market share or are they still growing just at a slower pace than the rest of the market? So, again, it's not about looking at the numbers in a vacuum. It's about the whole picture. Yeah. Understanding where they fit in. And we need to analyze their strategy. You know, right. are they innovating? Are they coming out with new products well, to keep up with Some more preferences? Yeah, exactly. Are they finding new markets to expand into? It's about staying ahead of the curve. OK, now. Earlier, we touched on Britannia being part of the Wadia group. Right. 
this big conglomerate with interests in all sorts of sectors. Yeah. Let's dig into that a little more. How might that relationship impact Britannia's day-to-day -day operations and their decision-making? Well, one advantage could be access to shared resources. Okay. The Wadia Group has a ton of financial resources, right. management, talent, business networks, okay. like. built-in support system yeah. that can give Britannia a real leg up, especially when it comes to things like expanding, attracting top talent, navigating regulations. It's like having a powerful ally in your corner. Exactly. But I'm sure there could be some downsides too, right? Well, there's always the risk of conflicts of interest. Okay. Investors might worry about related party transactions oh, okay. where Britannia is pressured to do business with other Wadi Group companies. Even if it's not the best. Even if it doesn't make sense for them. Right. So transparency is important. Absolutely. Transparency and good corporate governance are crucial. And there's also the risk that the group as a whole could underperform. Yeah. Which could drag down Britannia's stock even if their business is doing well. It's guilt by association. Kind of, yeah. So it's a mixed bag. The Wadia Group connection brings both opportunities and challenges. It does it definitely adds another layer of complexity. Every piece of information we uncover just adds another wrinkle to this whole thing. It does. We've got strong financials, but some potential red flags. Yeah. We've got this connection to a larger group but potential conflicts of interest. Exactly. A lot to consider. It is, and it shows how important it is to look at the whole picture when analyzing a company. Right. You can't get tunnel vision on just one data point. You gotta connect the dots, understand the context, and weigh all the pros and cons. Okay, so far we've been focused on Britannia's history, their financials, their ownership structure. Right. But to really understand where this company is going, we need to look beyond the present. The future. What are the big trends shaping the future of the Indian food industry? Now that's the million rupee question. Uh, yeah. And it's one that Britannia needs to get right if they want to stay on top. Right. We're seeing major shifts in consumer behavior. Right. And companies that can't keep up are going to get left behind. I'm all ears. <laughs> what trends should we be paying attention to? Well, health and wellness is huge. Right. Consumers are more and more concerned about what they eat. Yeah. They want healthier options, natural ingredients, things that fit their dietary needs and preferences. So it's not just about taste anymore. It's about nutrition. Yeah, making conscious choices about what you put in your body. Exactly. And this trend is only going to get bigger. Okay. Britannia needs to be at the forefront of this shift, developing products that meet those demands. So they can't just keep offering the same old biscuits and bread, they need to innovate. Absolutely. They need to create products that appeal to these health conscious consumers. Right. And that ties into another major trend, sustainability. Absolutely. Consumers are getting more aware of the environmental impact of their food choices. Right. They're looking for brands that are committed to sustainable practices. Okay. Sorting ingredients responsibly, reducing packaging waste. So it's about what's in the product, but also how it's made. And its impact on the planet. And consumers are putting their money where their mouth is. They are. They want brands that share their values. It sounds like the food industry is going through a massive transformation. It is driven by these evolving consumer expectations. What opportunities does that create for a company like Britannia? Well, they could focus on developing a portfolio of healthier snack options. Okay. Whole grain biscuits things with less sugar more fiber, okay. maybe even incorporating ingredients like millets and seeds that are seen as healthier. So it's almost like repositioning themselves as a brand that offers indulgence and well-being. Exactly. They need to appeal to a wider range of consumers, including those who are prioritizing their health. Yeah. And when it comes to sustainability, they could look into sourcing ingredients locally, Okay. reducing their carbon footprint using eco-friendly packaging. So lots of changes on the horizon for a company with such a long history. It'll be interesting to see how they adapt. Yeah, will they be able to keep up with the times and thrive in this new landscape? Well, that's the million rupee question, isn't it? And it's one we'll explore further after a quick break. Okay, stay with us. Okay, so we're back. And the big question is, can Britannia, with their history of more traditional treats, really embrace these new trends and thrive in this new world where everybody wants healthier and more sustainable options. It's a tough challenge. They built their empire on biscuits and bread, but the landscape is definitely changing. Yeah, it's a real balancing act. How do they make that leap from their legacy into the future of food? 
Well, I think a good place to start is with that health and wellness trend. Okay. Consumers are much more aware of ingredients and nutritional value now. Yeah. They're reading labels, comparing products, making decisions based on what they think is healthy. Right. So you can't just slap a low-fat sticker on something and call it a day. Exactly. Consumers are doing their homework. So Britannia has to be transparent with their ingredients. Absolutely. Offer real healthier choices. And maybe even educate people a little bit. Oh, yeah. About the nutritional benefits of their products. I can almost picture it now, you know, a whole new line of Britannia products. Yeah. Biscuits with whole grains and less sugar snacks made with, you know, superfoods like chia seeds or quinoa. Right, exactly. They could even partner with nutritionists oh, yeah. or health experts to develop and promote these new products. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Gives them more credibility. Yeah, it shows they're serious about it and builds trust with those health conscious consumers. Exactly. Okay, so we've talked about health. Now, what about sustainability? Right. We talked about how people want brands that are environmentally responsible. How does Britannia step up there? Well, they need to show their commitment to sustainable practices across their entire supply chain. Okay. So that means sourcing ingredients locally okay. to reduce their carbon footprint and support local farmers. So minimizing their impact, making sure ingredients are ethically sourced reducing waste wherever possible. Exactly. And they got to be loud and clear about these efforts. Right. Transparency is key. So highlight those sustainable practices on the packaging. In their marketing. On their website. Everywhere. So it's not enough to just do it. You got to tell people about it. It's about walking the walk and talking the talk. Now, we've talked about new products, sustainable practices. Right. But what about how they reach consumers? Right. In this digital world, everybody's online now. They have to adapt. How can Britannia take advantage of that? Well, they need to be where the consumers are. Right. And these days, that's online. Yep. They could create engaging content on social media. Like Instagram? Yeah, Instagram, YouTube, showcasing recipes. Okay. Highlighting the health benefits of their products, telling the story of their sustainability efforts. So it's not just about selling products online. It's about building a community. Exactly. Connecting with people. And becoming a trusted source of information and inspiration. Yeah, and then they can leverage e-commerce. Absolute. To make sure their products are easily accessible. Make it convenient. Yeah, order your favorite Britannia biscuits online, and boom, they show up at your door. Now, we've covered a lot of ground today. Mm -hmm. We've looked at their financials, mm -hmm. their ownership, all the strengths and weaknesses. The trends shaping the industry. Yeah, so what's the big takeaway here? What should our listeners be thinking about when they think about Britannia and the future. I think the main takeaway is that even a company with a long history like Britannia yeah. needs to be able to adapt and change with the times. Right. The world is changing. Consumer expectations are evolving. They have to evolve too. So it's not enough to just rely on what worked in the past. No. You got to be proactive, innovative. Up into new ideas. Yeah, exactly. And now they have a lot going for them. You know, right. a strong brand, a wide distribution network. They understand the Indian consumer, mm -hmm. but they need to leverage those strengths to overcome the challenges and take advantage of the opportunities that are out there. This has been a really fascinating look at Britannia. We've uncovered a ton of information. We have. But I think the most important thing is to stay curious, keep asking questions, and be open to new perspectives. That's what it's all about. Yeah. That's what makes these deep dives so interesting. It is. And for our listeners, as you see Britannia evolve, yeah. keep this conversation in mind. You know, think about how their choices reflect these bigger trends we've talked about. It's a story that's still being written. Yeah. Definitely a company to keep your eye on. Absolutely. Well, until next time, happy deep diving.